This is a new diagnostic tool that uh, has never been available to you before until now. Um, a lot of you are familiar with molecular, maybe PCR technology, but never understood, quite understood next generation sequencing. So I'm going to explain the difference between the new technology with PCR and next gen sequencing. I'm also going to talk about some of the common issues we, we run into with physicians starting to use this technology around how do you interpret the reports, uh, where do we consider using this. Um, I'm going to show you reports that are applicable to podiatry. Uh, and, and where you're dealing with microbes. And we're also going to, I'm going to kind of change your thinking on what you've learned about even from wounds to nails and what the common species of microbes that you thought were causing that, that look of that thick yellow nail. Um, so let's get started. All right, not, we're not in New England, so a lot of you probably don't know this face, but um, this is uh, Aaron Hernandez, and uh, he was the New England Patriots, and he was found guilty of murder. Um, the reason why he was found guilty was at the foot of the body they found a marijuana joint with his DNA on it. Um, they also found the shell casing under the seat of the car with his DNA on it. So it's kind of hard to deny you were not at the scene of the crime or not involved when your DNA was there. So we, we're moving from the, kind of the same approach we use in the criminal justice system. If you commit a crime and you go in, they process you in the county jailhouse, they take a swab, of your cheek, they collect your DNA, your DNA goes into a database. So now they're processing crime scenes and they collect DNA off of bodies, off of pizza boxes, door handles, victims. They take and extract and match it to that database and they can say with 100% certainty that you were there because your DNA is unique. Well microbes also have their own unique DNA. So every bacteria, every fungus and every virus has its own unique DNA. And until this point, it was too expensive and took too much time to be able to extract that DNA, match it to a database, and be able to tell specifically what microbes were involved. Until now, you've been relying on a technology that's from 1870, uh, which was the founder of microbiology, was Koch. So now we have, thanks to the Genome Project, we have a database of 25,000 sequence codes for 25,000 species of microbes. Now if you think about your medical career, you've probably seen on your CNS reports 30, maybe 40 bacteria, you can, your Pseudomonas, your E. coli, your Mercer's, your Staph, Enterobacter, Enterococcus, so forth. So you'd be hard pressed probably to get to 30 or 40. Um, but again, the tool you're, you were having to rely on had to grow the microbes. Well, there is now 25,000 in the universe um, in human samples to date, we have found over 4,000 microbial species in human samples. So if you go out walking in the stream and you go up against a rock and slime, against the slime on a rock, you're going to find different microbes. Or if you go and do a swab from a dog's mouth, you're going to find different microbes. But in humans already, we found over 4,000 species. Um, now, there are two levels of molecular. Some of you might be familiar with PCR. Uh, PCR has been around a long time. There are other labs that offer PCR, LabCorp, Quest, Vaco, they all offer now PCR. Um, but PCR has its limitations. You have panels of primers of microbes, so you'll have anywhere from 8 to 20 on a panel. Uh, hospitals will buy PCR platforms for MRSA or C. diff to want to rapidly screen patient samples to see if they're carrying MRSA or if they're carrying C. diff. So that's great if it tells you, it'll confirm what you ask it to confirm. But again, if there's 25,000 microbes in the database, it really doesn't help you too much. It's great if you know specifically what you want to target. So you could develop a PCR panel for nails and you could put five or six fungal species, but you're, if they come back and they're all negative, then you're kind of still like, well, what else is in there? Now we're moving to what's called next-gen sequencing. Next-gen sequencing gets most of its attention with cancer testing. It's making a huge impact on the treatment of cancer. And that's where a lot of the attention goes. We're the only lab in the nation that's CAP and CLIA certified to do next-generation sequencing for microbes. So this is where we're actually taking your sample, whether it's from a wound tissue, a swab, a piece of nail, even hardware, bone, any of those items, we can extract the microbial DNA 
and we can match it to this database of 25,000 and tell you exactly what you're dealing with. So now when you prescribe your antibiotics or your antifungals or don't use antifungals, you're gonna know precisely what you're dealing with versus what the lab managed to grow. All right. The barrier again with, to this technology was cost and time. So the, the next gen sequencing tests for cancer run between three to four thousand dollars. Medicare pays us hundred and ninety one dollars to do this test. So it's a great deal and I'll, I'll talk about some comparisons of that in a minute. So again medicine is diagnose and treat. The more accurate your diagnostic information the better your treatment decisions. I'm not positioning that next-gen sequencing of microbes as the end-all be-all. It is another piece of information to help you make better treatment decisions. You, until this point, again, you've had the concept of growing bacteria. And we know in parallel sampling studies, that means we can take a sample from a sinus or from a wound or from a bone, and I'm going to sh share with you some of those uh, studies. We can send one sample to a traditional culture and one for sequencing and we can find out how accurate the cultures are. In wounds, cultures have an accuracy of about 15% they, where they can find the dominant species. So 85% of the time, they can't even identify the dominant species. And you probably experienced this when you send it off to the culture lab, it comes back and they say Staph epi and you're looking at the wound, there's like tons of drainage, you can smell and you're like, there's more than Staph epi here. But again, the tool you've been relying on is having to grow the bacteria. Now, we're at, we have the sequence codes for 25,000 we can extract. That database sits at the NIH in Washington, D.C. So it's pretty amazing. You can take a sample from your office, goes into a FedEx box, lands in Lubbock, Texas. They're going to extract the microbial DNA. They'll do a PCR first of the common microbes. They'll deliver that next day. And then three to five days, they're going to tell you the results of the full sequencing of the 25,000. 